This is the story of a search for simple values. If it should have the qualities of a fable, we might remember that for centuries the fable has been the storehouse for all those things that we know in our hearts to be true. contribution we've had all morning. I think we're wasting our time here. Well, let's try out at the new shopping mall. All right. Merry Christmas. I'm so glad you're here, Mrs. Broderick. There's a terrible rumor making the rounds. Oh? What's this terrible rumor? They say the store's closing, that today's our last day. Well, that's, that's simply not true. I'm relieved to hear it, thanks. Right. I'll see you later. There's a small bonus in your pay envelope. I wish it were more. Uh, excuse me. Janet, could you just give me a minute? How am I supposed to find another job this close to Christmas? Chris, I can't afford you. Then maybe you ought to close the place down. I may have to. What's going on? I just had to let Chris go. Some of the others, too. He's spreading a rumor downstairs saying the store's closing. We are in bad shape, Janet. You've seen what it's like down there. Well, we've had... Slow Christmases before. We always cut our losses with a New Year's sale. After the first of the year, everything will be better. We may not make it till the first of the year. Every day we stay open, it's, we're losing money. Did you see the ad we're preparing for tomorrow's paper? Come to Broderick's for an old-fashioned Christmas. That's been our whole problem. We've been too old-fashioned. We haven't kept up with the times. I think this ad really can do it. You might even have to put on extra help. You better get that Santa Claus back in. There'll be a run on toys. Janet, you're not hearing me. Is there more than you're saying? No. I... Uh, look, I... I have to get downstairs. Okay. I'll be in my office. telling me what this argument is all about. This one's picking on my little brother. He started it, called me a dummy. He is a dummy. He's always showing off because he's in the gift of child program. There'll be no more fighting. If I hear of any more fighting, you're both going to get extra homework. Now shake hands and go on home. Come on, kids. You can all go home. There's nothing you can do for me. Well, then, I guess that's it. Bye. Bye. 
Mr. Broderick. Let's start to shut down. I just can't believe it. After so many years, your father, your grandfather. I know. Believe me, I know. Shall I call Mrs. Broderick in? No. I don't know how to tell her. Christmas pudding. When we eat it? Christmas dinner. What are you doing to it? Oh, I'm stirring in a bit of sherry. It's an old English custom. Will sherry make you drunk? Well, if you got too much of it, it might make you a bit tipsy. What's this I hear about you being in another fight? How did you hear about that? Well, Dustin's mother called looking for your mother. What was it about this time? Me. Oh. You showing off your superior intelligence again? Yes, ma'am. It seems to me, Michael, it's time you learn to take care of yourself. I don't need to. I don't need to do all my fighting for me. Oh, well, maybe I might be able to give you a pointer or two. Here. Come on now, make a fist. Two of them. Now, be alert. Put your guard up, Michael. Watch if she's going to surprise you. Come on, Grandma wouldn't hit me. Oh, I most certainly shall if you don't try to protect yourself now. You wouldn't. Oh. Hey, <coughs> Grandma, it's not nice. Well, put up your guard or I'll let you have it again. Uh, uh, that's the point. Oh, good. Uh, that's wonderful. Good, good. Now, put a little bit more zip into it. Now, come on. Oh, hotter, 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 hotter. That's the point. <laughs> oh. What's the matter, Grandma? Oh. Well, I... I'm not quite sure. Something, something hurts like a holy curse. Watch your language in front of young children. Wait, I forgot. Here, you two, give me a hand. Are you all right, Grandma? Yeah. yeah. I think we should try to head for the stairs. Yeah, I think I'll just lie down for a while. Are you dying, Grandma? Oh, God, I hope not. I'll tell you one thing. I refuse to die in the kitchen. In here, Mrs. Broderick. Where's Neil? Uh, he's uh, down on the first floor. What is going on here? I tried to tell you this morning. It's all over, honey. What do you mean? You're closing the store? I don't believe it. I had to. Why? We could have gone to the bank. I mean, we could have done something to keep on going. I have been to the bank. I have talked to the lawyers. I have done everything I know how to do. Oh, well, you never told me any of that. I thought that I could pull us out without... Oh, so you just went ahead and made a decision like this without even, without even talking to me. I should have. You think you're alone here? I mean, this place is us, not just you. This store is our life. Forget the store. We have more than that. I wonder. Now, oh, hold on. Well, what do you expect me to think when you pull a thing like this? Do you think it doesn't hurt me to give up? I didn't want to hurt you. You have. Janet, wait. I, I can't be with you right now. I have to... I'll walk home.
Hello, you two. Mom, Dr. Graham is upstairs with Grandma. What? What happened? Grandma was showing Michael how to box, and all of a sudden she had trouble breathing, and she's hurting a lot. She told us to clean up. What happened, Carter? She's resting now. She says she feels fine, but I'm not so sure. I'm going to keep a close eye on her. Janet, has your mother complained about anything lately? No, she's been fine. But you know, Mother, she has the strength of two people. Should she be in the hospital? I suggested that, but she threatened me with bodily harm. Sometimes Amanda can be an exasperating woman. I wouldn't want to force her to do anything against her will. <laughs> well, I doubt anybody's ever forced her to do anything and live to tell about it. I'll look in on her tomorrow. In the meantime, call me if there's any change. Well, should I do anything? Uh, I've given her a sedative. She'll probably sleep for the rest of the night. Well, thank you. Good night. Good night. I'll let myself out. Okay. don't know what happened. I used to be able to go ten rounds. You just overdid it. Well, I've always tried to keep it from close friends and family. But the fact of the matter is, the old girl is mortal. I don't accept that. Where are the children? We were making Christmas pudding. They're downstairs. Oh, I've got to clean up the no, kitchen. No, no. Dorothy and Michael are cleaning up the kitchen. I am extremely tired. I don't usually tire so easily. Will you just rest? I was dreaming of the secret place. What is the secret place, Mother? All my life I've heard about the secret place. What is it? Where is it? We used to go there, your father and I. I used to look for it when I was a little girl. Your father's probably there right now, waiting. The father's dead. One day, he and I were in an electrical storm, and I was so frightened. I hid in his arms until it was over. You sleep now, hmm? I baked a goose that Christmas. Sleep. How's Grandma feeling? Oh, she's asleep now. I think she's going to be all right. Has your father come in yet? No, but um, Dustin's mother called. She wants you to call. Oh, God. Did she say what she wants? I think it was about the fight I got into with Dustin today. Dorothy, I have asked you repeatedly not to get into fights. There are other ways to solve problems. Mom, it was my fault. Dustin called me a dummy. Well, that's no reason to fight either. And if it is, then you should have fought yourself and not asked your sister to do it. Mom, are you okay? No. Tell you the truth, I don't seem to be able to handle today. Sorry, kids. And my mother's not well. I'm I'll be upstairs with her. She woke up a couple of times in the night, but she's sleeping now. What will you do today? I'll be at the store. 
Lots of paperwork. Talk to the lawyers. Will there be anything left when it's all settled? I'm hoping we can hold on to the house. Well, that would be some comfort. I, I can start over again. People do that all the time these days. But you stop dreaming. It's not going to be that easy. We'll start small, the way my family did with the store a hundred years ago. Until then, I'll, I'll find a job somewhere. This is not a hundred years ago. The economy's rotten and there aren't that many jobs out there. Everything's changed. Including us. We're older, that's all. But that's not all. We've lost touch with each other. We can't even talk anymore without it becoming an argument. Janet, I have been under incredible pressure with the store falling apart. And what about me? Aren't I supposed to have feelings? I don't understand what's happened to us. Mother? What is it, Dorothy? I think you better go look on on Grandma. Yeah, I'm going to take her some breakfast in a minute. I think you better come look now. She won't wake up. Something you knew that would make me strong. Uh, a secret that you didn't tell me that would make my life as rich as yours seemed to be. Was there something you knew and didn't tell me? Oh, I need you, Mother. I need you. Freezing cold. Let me take you home. Nothing medical that I can find. But she seems in some deep depression. You know how things have been going lately. Uh, this this store and our mother's death. Uh, for all those reasons, we better keep a special eye on her. Call me if you need me. Otherwise, I'll stop by early tomorrow morning. Thank you, Carter. by morning, if we hurry. Mother? Yes, dear, I'm here. I don't feel well, Mother. You need to be home. Come.
Grandma, you're alive! Where are we going? Home. We are home. We're going with Grandma to her house. Great! Oh, wow, a sleigh! Neat! Where did that come from? Daddy! Oh, it's so good to see you again. Hello, my darling girl. How's my old citizen? First tree. <laughs> Grandpa, is that you? Indeed it is. I thought you were dead. Just a rumor. Now, let's all go on home. Two minutes. Can I go with you, Grandpa? You better get inside and get warm. We'll visit the animals later. <laughs> oh, Mother, it is so good to be home. Sometimes home is the best remedy there is. <gasps> I turned everything upside down getting ready for Christmas. I can't believe it's only three days off and still so much to do. But we had a caulking good time, didn't we, Minerva? Till I pinched my sciatic nerve. Twinges like sin when it's about to rain. How are you, Janet? Well, I, I'm all right, I guess. Children. Hey, Min. No, Min. Well, come on, everyone. Front room's for company. Kitchen's for family. Huh? When can we go up to the attic? Well, first we're going to warm up with some hot chocolate. Anyone wants anything stronger, better head over to Maguire's Saloon. <laughs> huh. All right, go on inside. Everybody find a place somewhere. What are you painting these days, Mother? Skaters on the mill pond. I can't seem to get it right. Is the mill pond frozen over yet? Yes, but not thick enough for skating. I always loved the mill pond. It's where I first met Neil. I seem to be lost. Where are you headed? Mount Snow. Vermont. Am I near either one? Well, you found Vermont. Mount Snow's that way, about 20 miles. 
You're very beautiful. Did you know that? Thank you. Come to Mount Snow with me. I think there's a good chance we could fall in love, but uh, we'd better make sure before we do anything reckless. <laughs> well, thank you. But I'm about to do something reckless all on my own. Tell me and I'll join you. Well, I'll tell you, but there's no way in the world you're going to join me. Now, where are you headed? Tibet? New York City. I'm not sure I'm ready for New York City. I'm a small town boy. Go skiing. You'll love Mount Snow. What's your name? In Vermont, we don't give our names to strangers. Even half a name? It's Janet. Look, I have a, a train to catch, and I'm in kind of a hurry, so... Enjoy your skiing. Goodbye, okay? Goodbye, Janet. We could have had a wonderful life together. want to live in New York City is beyond me. It's too hot in the summer, too cold in the winter. People trying to run you down in taxi cabs. Oh, that train better get going. Oh, the longer I look at you, the more, I, the more I'm convinced you shouldn't go. Oh. Got your ticket? One ticket. Darling, before you go, there's something I want you to have. I had planned for you to unwrap it after you got to New York, but I decided I want to see your face. <laughs> You like it? Thank you. Oh, it's wonderful. Get it? You can't oh. go. Huh? How do you do? Hello, sir. Uh, Daddy, this is, uh, uh, I, he was lost and I directed him to Mount Snow a little while ago. About five miles up the road, I realized I wasn't looking for Mount Snow at all. I had a devil of a time finding you. I, uh, I was wondering if you might marry me. I don't even know your name. My name is Neil Broderick. I'm from Illyria, Ohio. And uh, the only bad habit I have is smoking cigarettes, but I'm trying to give that up. And I'm in very good health. I'm an Episcopalian. My hobbies are fishing and gardening, and you are the first girl I've ever proposed to in my life. Well, I wish you better luck with the next one. Five miles up the road, I knew that you were the girl for me. Mom, Dad. Do something. Talk to him. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, in, in addition to getting yourself lost and um, fishing and gardening and smoking, what are your other interests? Well, my family owns a department store back in Illyria. My father's just retired, and uh, after this vacation, I'm supposed to go back and take over the store. His prospects look good. A good solid background. Good Ohio family. I, I think you should listen to him. All aboard! Mont Pelia! Oh, you missed my train! train. No, wh where will you live there? She's an artist. She's going to live in a garret in Greenwich Village. Well, we, we don't have any garrets back in Illyria, but there's a very nice studio in this door. Mr. Broderick, I don't know the first thing about you, but I do know that the last thing I want to do with my life is spend it in Illyria, Ohio. Now, would you please just go away? Bye. Goodbye. Where would I find you in New York? Would you please go back to Illyria? Forget you ever saw me. Bye. All aboard. Dad, remember the Christmas trees we used to get? Cutting them down ourselves? Well, there's some left. Not many, but a few. And can we go look? What's wrong with right now? Yay! Yeah, come on, Grandpa! Oh, you children, be careful. You want to break every piece of china in the house. We're sorry, Aunt Min. Come on, Grandpa, let's go. Hi, Mom! Like old times, isn't it? Yes, it sure is. Patty, see if you can find some sticks with red ribbon on the end of them. Uh, Janet, the saw's over there somewhere. Do 
leave names? The Drake's Methuselah. Four young ones are Eeny, Meeny, Miney, and Moe. White one? That's Brunhilde. They're having her for Christmas dinner. How are you gonna kill her? Well, she's gonna have to part with her head. I think I'll have cold cereal for Christmas dinner. I don't think I can eat anything that's been alive. Come on, everybody. Let's go get our tree. All right, here we go. Well, how about this one? No, it's too small. Here's a good one. No, there's got to be better ones. Glad you came home, Janet. There's something I need here, Dad. Maybe it's just to be home again. See the old faces? Sleep in the bed you grew up in. Helps to figure things out. Let's try back there. Dad, where's the secret place? Huh. It's hereabouts. Is it a real place? Oh, yes. Well, then, why don't you just show it to me? Well, it's like your mother always said. Won't mean anything, unless you find it yourself. Neil and I have hit rock bottom, Dad. I don't know how well, to go home. on. Home's not a bad place. To look back over your life, see what went wrong, what went right, helps to bring everything into focus. Grandpa, we found it! Look at this one, Grandpa. Oh, wow, that's cute. Hey, oh, guys. Boy, Look yeah. at this, Grandpa. It's one of one as I've seen in a long time. Yeah. 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 Star goes yeah. right at the top. Oh. Is it a unanimous decision? That's it. That's the tree we want. Janet. Perfect. All right. Now, here, you pound us in the ground right next to the trunk. Why? Because whenever we cut a tree down, we plant one in its place in the spring. Why? Well, Mother Nature gives us this tree. It's only fair to give her one in return. That's great. I like that idea. <laughs> So did your mother. She started this custom when she was just a little girl. Timber! Aren't we going to take it in the house? we got to put a stand on it first. In the meantime, we'll leave it here in the barnyard so the animals can enjoy it. Hey, you guys, Merry Christmas. Better get inside. Grandma's going to have supper on the table soon. Dorothy, come here a minute. What do you want? This goose is a really big problem. She's going to die. Yeah. And I'm going to eat it for Christmas dinner. Yuck. Dorothy? Michael? Sounds like supper's ready. Come on. Dorothy, we've got to do something about this goose. Michael, you've got to do something about this goose. I'm not fighting your battles anymore. Who's going to cook you for Christmas dinner, Brunhilde? Not while I'm around. Ouch! Sixteenth time I've stuck myself. <laughs> well, look. Try putting the needle through. Like that. Ah, I'm running out of popcorn. Well, the next batch is ready. I'll get it, Janet. Thanks, Aunt Lou. When I grow up and have a wife and a Christmas tree of my own, I'm not going to put anything on it but decorations I buy at the store. What about you, Dorothy? We're not going to get married. I'm going to be an old... a maiden lady. What have you got against marriage? I don't see why anybody bothers. I sometimes wonder, too. Dorothy, you're absolutely right. Marriage is a ridiculous arrangement. I mean, imagine two people pairing off and swearing before God and man to love, honor, and obey each other until death do them part. <laughs> Ridiculous. On the other hand, it's an arrangement that's worked rather well for some people. I mean, take your grandpa and me, for instance. I couldn't imagine life without that old citizen. Well, I still don't know. I mean, how can you ever be sure if he'll get along? I mean, sure, I want someone I can have fun with, but how can you ever be sure? I never saw you look more beautiful. Oh, suddenly I don't know why I'm doing this at all. Now, if you have any doubts, it's a little late to bring him up now. But I... I, I don't know him, Dad. I, I don't know the first thing about him. In Illyria, Ohio. I could get trapped out there. I'm sure he'll let you out for Christmas. Labor Day? Be better. 
I like Neil. I liked him right from the start. You don't know him either. Well, I expect I know what's going through his mind right now. What do you mean? How could you? Because I've been there myself. I remember standing there, my best man at my side, my knees turned into water, waiting for your mother to come down the aisle and thinking, I don't deserve her. Please, God, make me a better man so I'll be all she expects me to be. You think that's what Neil's thinking now? Something like it. I suspect that's why we get tearful at weddings. Two young people stand at the altar, and their love for each other is so visible, so exposed. Old timers know it won't always be that way. Time will take its toll. Life will ask steep prices for all its pleasures, but just for that one moment, the radiance of two young people, with their life together spread out in front of them, gives hope and wonder and strength to everyone who witnesses it. He's handsome. Not too handsome, just handsome enough, wouldn't you say? Yes, I would say that. Sense of humor. Whenever I'm low, you can make me laugh. That's much to his credit. Well, I guess I'd better do it. He's a good man, Janet. I wouldn't give you away to him if I had any doubts. Christmas absolutely perfect. I think we should have one of your burnt orange cakes. Oh, my. I haven't made one of those in years, not since you were a little girl. <laughs> well, let me see. I'll uh, need um, cinnamon. Where can I find two Christmas helpers to go to the store for me? Here, me. Well, when you get there, I want you to ask Mrs. Prince to give you uh, four oranges and uh, six cinnamon sticks and two pounds of chestnuts to stuff the goose with. <laughs> Shall I make a list? We'll remember, Grandma. Well, don't dawdle. I don't even know what Dotto means. It means to walk funny. Maybe I better go along and see these youngsters get down back. What do you want for Christmas, Mike? Everything. What do you want, it, man? A rose. That's a weird present to want. Then why'd you have to ask me for it? Come on, let's get the shopping done. Now scoot, both of you. I'll just look around. Dorothy? Oh, hello, Russell. What are you doing here? I'm spending Christmas with my grandparents. So are we. I'm Michael. Hi, Russ. Read any good books lately? I'm working my way through the Encyclopedia of Britannia. Russell, there is more to life than sitting in the library reading books. Did you people come to shop or to talk? Uh, these are Amanda and Spencer Fenwick's grandchildren. I memorize you two. Came here to visit last summer from out west somewhere. Ohio. Uh, Janet went out there to marry a department store. Did write good for herself, story goes. Did you want something special, Minerva? I'll let you know if I see anything, Abigail. What can we do for you, children? My grandma sent us to pick up four oranges, six cinnamon sticks, and two pounds of chestnuts. And what's your grandma having for Christmas? A goose. She's finally cooking old Brunhilde. Mr. Prince, will you please just fill the order? How about Dorothy? How about what? Would you like to go ice skating with me? I don't think I ought to, Russell. 
I've got weak ankles. I'd hate to tear my ankle and have to be carried home on a stretcher. Did you find what you want, Minerva? Yes, Abigail, thank you. This will do it. For you. Did you find what you were looking for, Minerva? Russell's staying with his grandparents. Mrs. Prince sure hollers at Mr. Prince. Never did appreciate what she got. Christmas ghost is late this year. Who's that? Usually come and gone by now. What's a ghost one around here anyway? Well, every year, a few nights before Christmas, he comes, leaves a gift, and then disappears until next Christmas. Who did he leave the gift for? Me. Here, put it up. Oh, there's the little ghost soldier's dance. Oh, that's a good one. Just about finished. Sorry. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Isn't it? The trees were always prettiest when your mother chose them. Well, it's not just the tree. It's everything. Here's the last one. Thanks, Grandma. What is it, honey? Oh, I'm happy. Then why the tears? I don't know. It's just having Janet and the kids home again and all being together. And having you, Spence. Always, my dear. Well, what else is it? I suppose I'm afraid. Of what? Things not being this way anymore and being alone and of not having you. Can't always be the same. But you are stuck with me. What's the matter, Mother? Little girl's having a good cry. Why oh, have not? Why? There are just some cracks in your mother's armor. Like. Well, one's a little squirt. The other one's just like a soldier, and he's cute. The little squirt would be Raymond. The cute one is Chance Mayfield, new family in town. Come on, Mike, let's go make some money. How? We'll sell mistletoe. I saw a ton of it out when we went looking for the Christmas tree. No trouble this time, Dorothy. Why do you keep snapping at those children? Well, you're a funny one to be asking that. It's different with me. I'm an old crab apple. But you, Janet, you don't appreciate what you've got. What do you mean? You married a fine man, and you have a family who loves you. It's about time you took notice.
right, huh? Up to you. Come on, Dorothy, get him! Come on, Mimi, for God's sake, cut it out. She's a girl. Thanks for rescuing a maiden in distress. What's your name? Dorothy. I'm the Wizard of Oz. What's yours? Chance Mayfield. Chance? What an interesting name that is. It's really Chancellor. Chance suits you much better. Would you like to come to a party, Dorothy? I'd like that. There's one tomorrow night at Melody Weber's house. I'm afraid I couldn't come unless Melody asked me herself. She told us to ask anybody we liked. It's a costume party. Everybody's supposed to dress funny. That sounds like a lot of fun. I'd like to come. Me too. Come on, Michael. We're going to sell mistletoe. What'd you do that for? Ah, uh, she probably won't even turn up. Well, for her sake, I hope she doesn't. You really do the most beautiful work, Mother. Now you know where you got your talent. What talent? I haven't painted in years. Mm. I went through a time like that. I kept waiting for the inspiration to do something extraordinary like the Sistine Chapel. <laughs> then one day, I decided to try a snowflake and found my calling. Well, maybe that's where I failed, Neil. Never giving up my high-blown ideas of becoming a great artist. I don't for a minute agree that you failed, Neil. It seems to me you gave him your talent in a very meaningful way. Yes? I'm sorry to disturb you, Mr. Broderick, uh, but there's someone outside who insists on seeing you. Who is it? What does he want? It's a woman. Uh, she says she wants to talk to you about a job in the art department. Now tell her we haven't got an art department. Tell her an ad agency handles all that. Well, she's very persistent. I think you ought to see her. I haven't got time to talk to some lunatic who's applying for a job that doesn't even exist. Send her to the employment office. I really think you ought to talk to her. All right. You stick around in case we have to throw her out or something. Would you come in, please? Hi. Hey. <laughs> Janet, you better wait outside. There's some disturbed person waiting to see me. I'm not in the least disturbed, but I could create quite a scene if you don't hear what I have to say. And this is the applicant I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, Miss Powers. Janet, I am trying to run a store here. And I want to help you, Neil. I've been studying the ads for the store, and the artwork is terrible. The copy's even worse, and I'm sure it discourages more people than it brings in. Yeah, I've been telling them that at the agency. Okay. Well, nobody's using that studio on the top floor. I want to set up an office there. I want to write the ads, design the copy. And while I'm at it, I think I can probably do a better job on window displays than whoever's doing them now. Janet, a woman's place is... is beside her husband. But you don't have to work. But I want to work. I want to be here. I want to be with you. What about Dorothy? Dorothy will just be right beside my drafting table. How are you going to take care of her and work at the same time? All Dorothy needs now is a lot of love and a change of diapers. Check the baby department. And they have lots of diapers. I don't know about this, Janet. Well, while you're thinking it over, I'll just go and check out the studio and see where we're going to put the babies then. Janet, oh. you're being very high-handed about this. Wait to hear my salary demands. Did you find the mistletoe you were looking for? Found it and sold it. Oh. Russell bought most of it. He's in love with Dorothy. I expect he's planning to kiss her. <laughs> yeah, well, he better not try anything with me. That's because she's in love with Chance Mayfield. You want to lose a tooth? Dorothy, that's enough. How come you and Dad don't kiss anymore, Mom? Oh. Well, sometimes people just grow apart, and uh, they don't, they have trouble showing how they really feel about each other. I saved this for you and Dad.
kind of cute. Maybe I'll wear this to the costume party. Except I don't like the hat. Here's one I like better. What are you gonna wear? I think maybe I'll go as a clown. I always did want to be a clown. You know, I'd celebrate Christmas if I had my way. You'd probably eat all the turkey stuffing all by yourself. Remember last Fourth of July when we set off firecrackers? I'll never forget it. That's how I'd celebrate Christmas. I'd set off the biggest firecrackers I could find. Hundreds of them. I'd wake the whole world up on Christmas Eve. That's kind of a weird idea. Too bad we haven't got any firecrackers. We do. I hit a whole package of five inch ones. Rockets, too. Hey! Mike, where are the firecrackers? Right here. Just look at those babies. Spend just about my life savings on them. Let's set one off. No, we're saving them all to celebrate on Christmas Eve. Put them back where I had them. I never knew you to be so fuzzy-headed, Janet. Where are you now? Mother, can love just die? I mean, can two people just stop loving one another? All couples go through that. It's not terminal. Feels like it. I wish you'd taken a mistress. Don't come on to me with that kind of talk, Janet. Put in a hard day and I'm tired. I'd know how to fight a woman, but how do I fight work? You're talking silly. You work as hard as I do. It's 12.30 and you're just getting home from the office. Well, the days aren't long enough for all I have to do. What do you have to do so late? I'm falling behind, Janet. Things are piling up. Don't you add to it. How could anything I say possibly influence you? You never hear a word I say. You don't listen. What's to listen to? You never talk to me. All right. I'm listening. We've lost something, Neil. Why? What have I done? What is wrong between us? I wish I knew. Maybe it's just what happens to people when they get older. I'm not old. And you're not old either, so it's not that. You used to be so kind and thoughtful. You used to call me in the middle of the day, no reason at all. And when I would come home at night, you'd be waiting, smelling of perfume and table all lit with candles. I suppose it was foolish to think that that would last. I did for a while. Then it went away. Why? I don't know. I really don't know. I've seen love survive where there didn't seem to be a chance of either side responding to the other. Closer to home than you'd think. What are you trying to tell me? Something about the power of love to endure when you take the time to look for it, work at it. Maybe Neil and I just didn't take enough time for ourselves. Your father and I did, and we found our secret place. Well, then, show me how to find it. I can't 
can't show you, dear. It's not on the map. And don't go looking in the geography book for it. This is very pretty, Mother. The prettiest one you ever made. The crowning touch of the tree. You really get everything right, you know what I mean? Like tonight? Yeah. If this part is the best costume, I bet I'll win it. I'll tell you a secret. What will it cost me? This one you can have for free. I really feel good. You look good. Yeah, so do you. How's my lipstick? You've got too much on, but it's too late to do anything about it now. We've been waiting for you two. Come on in. I hoping my diphtheria shot didn't take and it'll hit me all of a sudden and I'll die. I miss you an awful lot. Just go away and let me cry for a while. I'll close the door in case you make a racket. Listen. What's the matter with you? I think it's Santa Claus. Oh, Michael. Intellectually, I know it's impossible, but emotionally, I keep hoping. Dorothy, come here a minute. What do you make of it? The Christmas ghost. Come on. I made some dandelion wine last summer. I put it up to Mellow just for tonight. How are you, Minerva? Well, the years are catching up, Hannibal. Each one seems to go faster than the last. I still love you, Minerva. me up. 
Tell me all the news. Mm. Russell's mother and father are divorcing. Oh, no. Neither of them seems to want a boy, so he's with us. It sweetens my days to have him there. And you, Minerva? No, oh, people put up with me. I'm becoming a sharp-tongued old woman, Hannibal. But the minute I say the words, I wish I could call them home again. I walked to Heaven's Hill not long ago. Remember the time we went there and flew the kite? Yes. We couldn't have been more than 20. Just the two of us and that kite you made out of wrapping paper. I can still see the face of the dragon you drew on it. <laughs> and the tail, the tail must have been a dozen feet long, <laughs> whipping and snapping in the wind. I didn't say how anyone could ever get it up into the air. Not the two of us did. <laughs> yes. I remember your arms around me. And the wind tugging at the kite. And the feeling that the two of us were up there soaring on the wind. You were so close I could feel the beating of your heart. Mustn't stay long. Christmas, Minerva. And to you too, Hannibal. What are you two doing down here? We just saw the Christmas ghost. Here's where they have men. Is everything all right, Atman? What are you folks doing up so late? We saw the man that was here. I didn't say any man, just a ghost that comes at Christmas. Was he your sweetheart once? Dorothy. It's all right, Janet. Yes, he was a long time ago. Oh, he was a wild young man. He was the first to come to a party and the last to leave it. He had a reputation for being fast with the ladies. And my Mother and father didn't like that. So when he asked for my hand, my family stood in the way. I ran away with him once, but they caught us and brought me back. 
sent me to Portland for two years to live with relatives. While I was gone, he married Abigail Huddleston. But when he looked at me, I knew he loved me. And then one year on Christmas Eve, a rose was left on my windowsill. Year after year, a single rose. After a while, he started coming in for a few minutes. And that would give me something to look forward to till Christmas came again. Aunt Min, didn't you have another sweetheart? Here it is, Christmas Eve, and I haven't even finished my shopping. Could you give us a ride down to the store, Min? I'll walk, thank you, Spence. My sciatica's easing up. I'd enjoy the walk. Can I go with you, Aunt Min? Well, you certainly cannot. I want your Christmas present to be a surprise. Do you want to do something, Dorothy? Don't bother me, Michael. I'm in a very bad mood. She's got a broken heart. I have not. Well, the thing about a broken heart is that it mends. Not mine. Well, sometimes it seems to take forever, and then suddenly one day you find the old ticker is just as strong and as sturdy as it always was. <sighs> well, if I'm not at the dark, send for the police. <laughs> Spend lots of money, Minerva. I'm expecting a very expensive gift. <laughs> Let's do something. Leave me alone, Michael. The way I feel, I may not live through this day. You nit! Mommy kicked me! Did not! Did you open my leg is beating 60 miles an hour? You just stop screaming and yelling, you two, and go outside and play and behave yourself. I never do anything right, do I? Is that the way it seems to you? Those two are where I fail the most. Oh, they don't seem like failures to me. I mean, all children bicker. Oh, it's not just the bickering, Mother. Dorothy's carrying this tomboy thing on forever. And Michael's constantly in her shadow. They're good kids, Janet. And I think they really love each other. You must remember you were an only child. I think if you could imagine what it would have been like if you'd had a brother, you'd be able to understand their relationship better. But Dorothy's always fighting his battles for him. Hardly a day goes by she doesn't come home with a black eye. I suppose you've forgotten Pauline Gates. Oh, that awful girl I went to school with. <laughs> she stuck chewing gum in your hair. <laughs> oh, what made you think of her? As I recall, it was a landmark. You graduated from fighting to name-calling. How did I manage that? You and I had a little talk, and I tried to remember how it felt to be a 13-year-old. Oh, yes. Yeah, I remember that. Go for a walk? Guess I've got nothing better to do.
When I was 13, I fell out of that tree right over there. And broke my arm. <laughs> it's hard to think of you climbing a tree. Oh. I was showing off for Freddie Thistlewaite. Oh, Lord, he was handsome. And he didn't know or care that I was alive, even after I broke my arm for him. Some boys are like that. Yeah, but not all of them. Well, sure, Dad's not like that at all. You sure were lucky to find him. Yeah. <laughs> so what? Dorothy! Oh, they're laughing at me! Well, why would they do that? Why well, at that party? They thought it was funny. Well, just be a lady and ignore them. Mom, we've got to get one thing straight. I'm not a lady. Maybe one day I may grow up to be one, but right now I'm 13 and I'm really mad, and if I don't do something about it, I'm liable to explode. Well, what do you have in mind? Revenge. You mean like this? What? Trollops, loose women? You better watch out when you're around me, you creeps. I'll tell you once and for all, don't mess around with me, because I'm dangerous. You dirt balls, low riders, scuzz bunnies. Ah. Mother, where did you ever learn such language? I was 13, too. <laughs> Sometimes I get the feeling like being 13 is like a fatal disease. Will I ever live through it? Well, don't worry about getting through it. Just love it. I know I haven't been very good at showing you, but I do know what it's like. And I love you. Okay, everyone. Here you go. All right, come on, Grandpa. Careful. 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 You'll love it, Mom. It's a surprise. You'll get a big bang out of it. Oh. <laughs> May I be excused, please? What's the matter, honey? Don't you feel well? I feel awful. Oh. Well, you go upstairs and lie down. I'll come up and see you in a little while. What's the matter with him? What's the matter? Uh, give him candy. I haven't given him any candy since this morning. That's the information. Yeah. He's hungry. He's got Yes. I'll come back for you, and you'll be safe again for another year. No, but Hilda, wait! No, wait! Help! Help! Sorry, Bernilda. It's a hard fact to life on the farm. Oh, it didn't take long. Where's the goose? 
That's what I'd like to know. Oh, I've been fattening that bird for a whole year. Don't tell me she decided to fly to Florida for the holidays. I think I'll have a little talk with my grandson. Well, he's supposed to be upstairs in the children's room. Janet went up to check on him. Oh. Where's Michael? He's probably in the bathroom. I haven't seen him. Well, I just passed the bathroom. He's not in there. Michael! He's not up here, Grandpa. What do you want him for? I suspect he's run off with the Christmas ghost. Oh, Michael. Hannibal? Hannibal, we've got a missing child out here. Could you take a look around down there and see if there's any sign of him? Uh, the bus stop, maybe. He might have a goose under his arm. Right. Well, thank you. Did Mike give you any idea what his plans were? No, but he sure is crazy about that goose. <laughs> well, he can't have gone far. I'll find him. I'll go with you. Now, I'll catch up with him sooner if I'm alone. Now, don't worry. I'll have that rascal home in no time. <laughs> I suppose I could have asked him to kill me another goose, but I just didn't have the heart. I'm going to go down to the cellar and see if I can find a ham to bake. Michael! Michael! I looked in the attic. He's not there. I'm going to go look for him. Oh, I wish I'd realized how much that goose meant to Michael. I forgot that city bred kids aren't used to the way we do things out here in the country. He, uh, he might have got out on the mill pond somehow. There's a hole in the ice. Janet, wait until we get some help. I've got to go find him, Dad. can we do? Pray. Janet, I'll take you home. No, not until I find him. I heard about Mike. I'm sorry, Dorothy. He's not dead. I just know it. He's not dead. They're going ahead with the Christmas service. Mealy mouth hypocrites. How can they celebrate Christmas at a time like this? It's not a celebration. My grandfather said it was an offering to God to ask him to help bring Mike home. He's not dead. He's lost, and I'm going to send out a signal to help him. Can I help? You sure can. Help me haul out the firecrackers he buried. Let's set off a rocket first. This one's for you, Michael. Hear it and follow it home.
We're all out of fireworks, Dorothy. Mike hasn't heard us by now. He's not going to. I can't find him anywhere. Mother? Yes, dear? You're dead, aren't you? Yes, Janet. I was so touched by the way you stayed behind after my funeral. It's a wonder you didn't catch your death of cold. Father's dead, too. And Aunt Min. This is a dream. Oh, yes, it's a dream, all right. But we're the authors of our own dreams. And we can make happen whatever we want to happen. It's good to have you home again, Jen. was a way you had of standing at the window and looking out, always waiting for someone. Don't be sad for me. He comes. I'm a grown woman now. I have a family. Home of my own. We're proud of you, Janet. I'm losing them, Dad. Somewhere along the line, I've, I've lost my marriage. Then you must find it. Where do I look? First, look inside yourself. That's the secret you always wanted us to tell you about. The secret place. The secret place is inside you, within you. I've never been able to find it. Sometimes you have to reach down deeper inside yourself than you've ever been. You have to find a faith that's greater than anything you could possibly imagine. You'll find the strength that's in all of us, if only we have the grit and the guts to discover it. It's in you. It's in each of us.
Danielle, I'm so glad you're here. I heard your voice. I knew you needed me. Michael's disappeared. We can't find him anywhere. We'll find him. But, but he's been gone for hours. I know. But we'll find him. I want to tell you something. I love you. I love you, too. Oh, we haven't said that in so long. So many times I wanted to tell you how much I loved you, how, how much I needed you. I wanted to call you back as you were leaving the house, just, just to touch you, feel you. Something to hold on to until we could be alone again at night. How did we lose that? Maybe we just didn't realize what a lovely thing we had. We drifted away from being young and... And all that passion. Somewhere along the way, we lost each other. We are getting older, Janet. Is that so bad? No. I don't think that's bad at all. In fact, I think it's wonderful that we've come this far. I love you, Janet. Mm. I remember something your mother once said. In the presence of love, there are miracles. gone all night. I thought I'd lost you. I thought I'd never see you again. Now I remember. <laughs> I fell through the ice. I thought I was going to die. I was really scared. But I'm all right. I'm fine. Oh, you are so fine, and I love you so much. I love you too, Mom. But what's the matter? Well, uh, how did you get here? The whole time I was lost, I heard sounds like somebody shooting off firecrackers. Oh, that was your sister trying to help you find your way home. I'm sorry I worried you all, but I guess saving Brunhilde was my job. Well, you're a very brave young man, and I am very proud of you. Could we go home now? Mm -hmm. Yes. We can go home now. been? You slept all night and all day, too. How do you feel? I don't know. I... All right, I guess. Can I, can I get you something? No, just hold me. So far away. I was afraid I'd never see you again. There's a place we're going to build together, a secret place for just the two of us. Janet, we've lost so much. There's no money, there's nothing. We have everything. We have each other. We have love. Children.
Merry Christmas. Oh, Mama, are you all right? Are you okay? Mom, should you be out of bed? I'm much better, darling. You slept the longest kind of time. Well, it was just what I needed. We were sure worried about you, Mom. Thank you, darling, but I'm fine now, and it's Christmas Eve, and in a few days it'll be a brand new year, and look <laughs> what you've done! It's beautiful! You put up all of it all by herself. You put up all of it by herself. You decorated all by herself. Time for that. <laughs> all right, here we go. Open up the star, Daddy. Yes. yes. Okay. Yep. Oh, that, huh? oh, that's great, yeah. Hey, it's the carolers. We invite them in. 